If I have a favorite Mishnah, which sounds funny to say, it's the first Mishnah in the fourth chapter of Pirkei Avot, the Ethics of the Fathers, and it's a series of questions. And the questions really go to the essence of Jewish life and the essence of the human condition. The first question is, Ezehu Chacham, who is wise? And the answer is, Hello made me kol adam, one who learns from everybody. Now the rabbis are doing something very remarkable here. They're taking a trait that would normally be restricted to relatively few people, the number of wise people is a small percentage, and we're all limited to some extent in areas of wisdom because we're limited by factors such as IQ. But the rabbis say the wise person is not the one who teaches everyone, it's the one who learns from everyone. So they make wisdom accessible to every person. You don't have to be an innate genius, but if you're willing to learn from everyone, you're going to become very smart. The second question is, who, uh, who is rich? Ezehu Ashir. And the answer is, Asameach Bechelko, one who is happy with what he or she has. That's very essential. Again, they're broadening the concept of wealth. Because normally, who is wealthy? It would be somebody of fantastic uh, wealth, and the percentage of people who have that is going to be very small. I was once speaking to a very wealthy man that I know, and he was commenting on his wealth. He said, I'm not so wealthy. And then he referred to Sheldon Adelson, who at this time is the wealthiest Jew in the United States, and said, he's wealthy. Meanwhile, a few weeks later, I'm looking in the New York Times at the business section, and there's an article headline for Sheldon Adelson being number three is not enough. And it goes on that Adelson, who's regarded as the third wealthiest person in the United States, it's important to him that he eclipse Bill Gates and Warren Buffett and be number one. So if somebody with that level of wealth is still concerned about accumulating money, what does it mean? We're not going to satisfy our desire for wealth through wealth alone. In fact, I would argue even further. The real goal, I would imagine, of wealth is so that you don't have to think about money. So insofar as a person is thinking a lot about money, they're really not that wealthy. So the goal is, is to be happy and to be satisfied with what you do have. A third question is, Ezehu Gibor, who is a strong person or who is a hero? Now again, that's also something that would normally be restricted because most people are not going to be heroic. Many people have fears. I remember my daughter, Naomi, when she was two, told me that she thought I was the bravest man in the world, a belief that was shattered when she was four and we went to an amusement park and I wouldn't get on the, uh, uh, the roller coaster. Uh, so first of all, a lot of people are not going to be great heroes because they have fears. Secondly, even if someone has physical courage, how often in life are they going to be called upon uh, to be heroic? The rabbis say, Ezehu Gibar, who is a strong person? Hakoveshet Yitzro, one who overcomes his inclinations and it seems to mean his bad inclinations. So again, they now make this accessible to everyone to be heroic, a great figure, and not only to everyone, but to everyone several times a day. So they take traits that would normally be restricted. Only a very small percentage of people are really intelligent. And they said, no, who's intelligent? All of you can be intelligent if you're willing to learn from everyone. Who is rich? Again, only a small percentage of people. They say, no, all of you have access to being rich if you can be satisfied with what you have. Who is a... Uh, a strong person, a, a brave person, normally again very restricted, but now they say it's accessible to everyone if you're willing to work on yourself.